Hello everyone, welcome back to Geeks Can't with World of Game Design. I'm your host, Zach, and I'm joined today by the creator, Tommy, uh, who is doing Goblin Gonzo on Kickstarter. How you doing, Tommy? Hi, Zach. I'm doing good. Excellent. Tommy, uh, this is the first time that you and I have gotten to chat, face-to-face at least. Um, it is. I'm, I feel like I need to get to know you a little bit more, <laughs> so why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? What 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 should the world know about Tommy? Well, I'm... Uh... I'm the one half of uh, our new company, Black Games, um, who uh, also did the Sump book, the supplement for Merkball. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm an educated graphic designer and an illustrator. And I do all the graphic design and drawings and stuff for our books. While my uh, my business partner, Ricky Hugo, he, um, he has joined me and we made this company together. So now he's doing all the writing Nice. So I can focus on the on the graphic work. Excellent, excellent. So yes, yeah, so you started with uh, one of the more popular Mork Mork books, the the Swamp book, S V M P, um, which yes. is now out and available. Right, people can pick up Swamp, um, and people have been. It's 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 getting good reviews, and people seem to really like it. Yeah. Um, and so Swamp is this like. Um, well, you tell me. You you tell me. I was going to try to describe to folks what Swamp was, but you you tell us what's what Swamp is first off. Yes, um, it is a, a supplement for the role playing game Mugball. Um and Mugball has this really dark and filthy setting, so I thought that a swamp would fit right in there. Mm-hmm. I have always had something with swamps. All my games that I have run, my players are always going through a swamp somehow. Mm-hmm. So um, I uh, I actually started to just draw some monsters when I first read Mugball, and then I posted them on uh, on the social media pages for Mugball, and people seemed to like them. So it ended up with a whole book on 120 pages. I think we ended up with. Yeah, and you turned it into like it's 120 pages. It's gorgeous. Um, it's hardcover. It's got the got the ribbon it's it's a very nice book all the way around and i know even like johan and and folks were really really impressed by by swamp so you go to swamp which is which is amazing and a setting book and then from there you dive into for goblin week this this year you did goblin gonzo what the heck is goblin gonzo well goblin gonzo is uh it's something different from swamp because Swamp is is a supplement to Mugball, where Goblin Gonzo is a standalone game. But we have we have taken the mechanics um, and the rules of playing from Mugball because it's such an easy system. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we we kind of just hacked it and made it our own. So we used the core mechanics of Mugball, but we added a few mechanics ourselves, and we changed stuff that needed to be changed. Since in Goblin Gonzo, you play as the goblins mm. specifically as the goblins from the markborg setting or from your own setting or what's the idea there it's actually um our goblins are a bit different from the markborg goblins because in markborg the the main thing about goblins is that they all carry this curse yeah and if you get in contact with a goblin you have like i think it's three days before you turn into one yourself unless you kill the goblin that infected you. Uh-huh. Um, we found that concept very cool, but not very playable. Mm. Because in, in this world of Goblin Gonzo that we created, there are many towns where our human beings and goblins actually coexist. Mm. Mm-hmm. So this is a new, completely new setting, and comp- not just a setting, but a completely new book. What... What kind of was the inspiration for Goblin Gonzo then? Like, what what made you decide? Obviously, like, I'm in agreement with you. Like, the Morkborg mechanics are a great way to hack something and, and create your own thing. But why create your own thing in the first place? What's what's what what got you excited about the goblins? Well, it it started out before I partnered up with Ricky. Mm-hmm. I I had this idea after I made a sump that I would make a game called Sump Goblin, mm. where in, in the Sump book, there is a, a monster that is kind of the same as the Mugball Goblin, but 
a swamp version with gills and fins and stuff. So I I pitched this idea for Ricky, mm -hmm. and he was like, "But isn't that just a supplement for a supplement?" Mm -hmm. And I thought about it, and I had to agree with him. So Ricky came up with this idea that he thought it was awesome to make a game where we play as goblins, but why make it just a some goblin? He had all these crazy ideas of different kinds of goblins. Mm -hmm. So we have like, I think we are up to 11 different mm -hmm. classes you can play in the, in the Goblin Gunsaw book. Um, yeah, so 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 that's how it. Uh... That's cool. That's cool. So, so so let's dive into that a little bit. So so you said that there's eleven classes. Before that, you said that you kind of had you added some stuff to the Morkborg mechanics and you you changed around some things. What did you find necessary to change, um, other than adding a bunch of new classes? Like, what are the things that make this game different and unique? Well, we um, we don't use the Doomsday Clock. Mm -hmm. Because we, I think mostly not to confuse people that this is the same world as Merkborg, even though they are, there are, there are many resemblances to uh -huh. the Merkborg universe. It is, it is this bleak and crazy world like Merkborg. And we, we added a mechanic because we wanted um, Goblin Gonzo to be a very crazy game. Mm -hmm. um, we added this mechanic that we call a cookie mechanic. It's sort of a, like the inspiration mechanic from Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. Here you place like a like a bowl on the table and you will got these uh, cookies. Not not cookies like you eat. It can be something you eat or something you drink or whatever you want. And then if someone is doing something really crazy role playing wise uh -huh. or something very memorable, you can reward your fellow players by giving them this cookie. <laughs> and then you can collect these cookies, and when you have one, you it has one use. And if you have two cookies, you can use it for something even better. Oh, that's cool. So this is where you where you um, encourage encourage your players to to act out as crazy goblins, mm -hmm. and they will get rewarded for that. Other than that, we just changed like you know the the starting equipment, made it more mm -hmm. more goblin uh, themed. And Go we made uh, whole new weapons. Actually, um, we have four four categories of new weapons, like the fancy weapons and the tribal weapons and brutal weapons and some makeshift weapons. Nice, nice. That's fantastic. So, no, probably knows why Honda being carried around by a goblin. Sorry. Uh, pro probably there's no why Honda being carried around by a goblin in this one. The big two-handed sword from from the core. Oh, the high hander. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we made some weapons a bit more a bit more appropriate for the goblin. Yeah. But, but each class, we we actually have like a like a ogre like goblin. Oh, cool! Who is awesome. Really huge. So we have the brutal weapons. They fit the the larger species of of goblins. Mm -hmm. So each class has this. Um, mm. Each class has their own uh, table of weapons to roll on so nice the characters that's really good i really like that actually um in the morkborg book you know um different classes just roll a smaller die for the weapons table and while that's yeah. cool there's sometimes that you feel like well i know that why we're doing a smaller die but really this class maybe should be able to get the bow even though you can't get the bow right yeah or something I like agree. that so it's really smart i think to break it apart and say we're just going to do a weapon table for each class or for each type of class. And that way we can kind of tailor fit it a little bit better. Um, I really like that. That's a good, that's a good change in my book. So thank you. Yeah. Cool. All right. So let's go back to the beginning for just a moment. Um, you talked, you said at the beginning that you, uh, 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 uh trained in graphic design before all this, before a thump. So what, was the what was the is it is Spump your first RPG book or was there stuff before that and what was kind of that transition from graphic design to I'm gonna I'm gonna make RPG books? Um, yeah, let's start with uh, Swamp is my very first book. Mm. It's my first game. It's my first publication. 
Um, so it was a whole new world for me. Um, but I, I think it was because when I discovered Knockball and saw the style, the graphic design in it, how uh, Johan Noah breaks all the rules for graphic design, that just spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And also, I, when I was younger, I, I used to practice my drawing skills a lot. But then for many years, I didn't, I didn't draw anymore. Hmm. So I didn't think that I was, you know, skilled enough to, to actually draw and make something that people would like. Hmm. But then I saw it's this kind of artwork that they do in Mugball, where the images are, let's just say imperfect and gritty. And some of them are even just sketches. Uh -huh. Um, you know, so I found this style that, that I thought, okay, I can, I can tap into that. And then I just started drawing again and kind of developed my own style, but with much inspiration from Knockball. That's really cool. I've talked to different people, um, on the show who dove into Morkborg because it has this freedom, right? And because it's, it's this weird, yeah. like design first RPG. Um, but I haven't talked to anybody yet that, that spoke as you just did. A lot of people say, well, I was designing over here or I was designing for this game system for fifth edition or for whatever. And then I saw Morkborg and I'm like, oh, that's amazing. I want to go do that. But they're already, or maybe they're, you know, designing for a, a um, an advertising or a marketing agency and they, this is their outlet, but it's really cool to hear you say that Morkborg was kind of the thing that got you back into art and design. Um, and yeah, that, it definitely was, that's really cool. That's really cool. Um, it definitely has a style. I think, I think that there's a, there's a danger with Morkborg. There's an excitement and there's a danger, right? The excitement is you look at the book and you say, wow, this breaks all the rules. I want to do that. I think I can do that. And then the danger is that there's actually a really a brilliance to what Johan and Pele put together in that first book, right? It's beautiful. And even yeah. though it's, you know, like you say, the artwork looks unfinished at times and it's stealing from the public domain at times and other things like that. And it has these wild color schemes that don't, that sometimes clash. It all actually works. And I think the danger is assuming that all you need is, wild and crazy and you don't have to you don't have to have a, a an eye for art to to make a work work book and really the opposite is true right like it takes yeah. a an artist's eye to make a great work work supplement where it may not take that in other games yeah because you i agree uh, because you you can yeah how should i say it? you you have to know the rules for graphic design to break them in a proper way right yeah, yeah. because you can you can Everyone can make a, a page and just throw some text in there and some images and it will look really shitty. So there has to be some kind of thought behind the madness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. Completely agree. So let's talk a little bit. Um, while, while we're chatting here, you're at um, almost 11,000 US dollars um, on your on your campaign. You've unlocked, you know, a... Uh, 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 the hardcover variation of the book you've unlocked uh, a subclass and one of the things that you're working on is this weird cassette tape idea and that's the yeah. next stretch goal talk to me about a little bit about because i'm always fascinated with these little like oddities that that people tuck into their morkborg uh, campaign and you got this you know i think you call it like a a a, a, a reworked or a, a remade a salvaged uh, cassette tape. What is yeah. what's that about? Yeah, it's um, Ricky is um, he has a background in the music industry. He was a DJ, I think, and he has done some booking for concerts and stuff. Hmm. So he was uh, he was very keen on this idea that we should definitely have some music to accomplish the book. Mm -hmm. And then we just said, let's do a cassette tape because it's fucking awesome yeah <laughs> and 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 in the beginning we were trying to find out where should we get these cassette tapes and we were we found some very cheap new ones you could yeah you know, buy from china and stuff but there are so many cheap cassette tapes that that are absolutely in perfect shape in the thrift shops mm -hmm. the secondhand stores yeah so we we just bought a huge bunch of cassette tape some of them are empty some of them are whole new but some of them are used and we um 
we actually use this as a selling argument in yeah. a way because we we upcycle these old tapes and just record over them with the new songs and we will make the the covers the inlays to the cassette tapes we will um, hand press them i don't know how we're gonna do that yet but <laughs> maybe uh what's it called Lin linoleum uh -huh. press or, uh -huh. so mm. the idea is that each tape is going to be completely unique and they will have a lot of imperfections as well but we have some really cool friends who makes music both of us and then we got some really cool bands to to make some stuff for us as well um loot the body is one mm -hmm. of them most people know who that is if mm -hmm. you play tape games and bug wizard yeah. has a song for us and um, right now we we have enough money on the kickstarter so we have that was one of the stretch goals as well so we have started reaching out to other artists that we think are, are very cool and fits the theme. Nice, nice. That's incredible. I'm I'm really excited. We worked with um, Bog Wizard on a cassette tape Ooh. when we did a project, and it just really adds something to have some great atmospheric music that that goes along with it. And I love the idea. It's upcycled, which is cool, but it's also very much a goblin thing to go scavenge, you know, scavenge uh, your thrift exactly. store and like you know, find cheap tapes and record over them and have those imperfections and those oddity. Like it's, it's very much on brand. I really like that. Like finding those really weird, um, special things are sometimes what makes the Kickstarter like really pop. And I, I'm super pumped about that, that particular aspect of this one. So cool. Yeah. Awesome. So let's see. So Goblin Gonzo is live right now. As of this recording, recording on uh, February the 8th, there's 22 days left to go. So still plenty of time to get on board. Um, Tommy, uh, as we kind of get towards the end of our chat here, is there any places other than the Kickstarter that you would like for folks to head or check out um, if they're interested in you? We have uh, made our website. It's uh, just uh, Blick, and that's B L A E K. It's not bleak, it's black. It means ink in Danish. Nice. Dot games. That's the address. Perfect. Yeah. B L That's our web yeah. yeah. B L A E K. Perfect. Dot games. Dot games. Perfect. Yes. And that's our web shop. Right now we only have two products in there. The some part cover book and the poster. But I actually think that we might have sold the last poster today. There was only a hundred of them. Nice. Nice, but there'll be more coming uh, as you uh, as you load up and uh, as yeah. as now Goblin Gonzo is successful, and I'm sure you got other ideas in the works and a lot more coming out. What last question? I, I won't ask you what your next um, what your next project is necessarily going to be because sometimes that's a good surprise. But what other, have you looked at? Are you interested in designing for any other systems, or is there any other RPG spaces that uh, Blake Games is is looking at tackling? We are actually um, after this one. We're going to uh, to do something completely different. We have uh, two smaller games uh, in the scope. One of them is like a found footage inspired horror survival oh, game, awesome. where we make our own mechanics, very rules light, but it should be very effective. Inspired by by tunnel goons, the mechanics where we have these dice pools. Hmm. Um, so that's something completely away from Mugball. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we have a, a a game we call Grotten. Okay. Um, that is a tile-based RPG that you can also play solo. That is um, sort of like this one-bit pixel, a homage to old-school, uh, you know, Nintendo games and stuff. Nice. So nice. I think those are the next two we have in our scope. But we have a lot of ideas written down. Oh, yeah. So a lot of stuff will be coming from our hands in the future. Very, very cool. Well, Tom, thanks for hopping on today. Uh, good luck with the rest of your campaign. We'll send Thank as you. many people as we can. And uh, we look forward to uh, keeping an eye out for more products uh, in the near future. Thanks for having me. Thank you.